What's the big deal with PowerShell? Where does PowerShell really get its power from? This video is going to be all about breaking down why I love PowerShell and why I think it's so powerful. Let's go. You never forget your first programming language, and for me, it was PowerShell. But before I dig into that, if this is your first time visiting my channel and you're wanting to grow your IT skills in your IT career, just hit that subscribe button, maybe the little bell so that you get alerted when new content becomes available. All right, PowerShell. For real, I love PowerShell. I was reading Learn PowerShell in a Month of Lunches by Don Jones back when I worked it for an MSP. Because as an MSP, working as a consultant and a managed services provider, you wear a lot of different hats. And I found that I spend a lot of time interfacing with Windows Server and Windows 10 devices. Let's demystify something right now though. PowerShell is not just for administering Windows tools. PowerShell is now cross-platform. You can run PowerShell on Mac, you can run PowerShell on Windows, you can run PowerShell on Linux, and in fact, I do the majority of my PowerShell and .NET development on my Ubuntu laptop, the Dell XPS Developer Edition. I absolutely love it. So when I started learning network automation, obviously that was very, very heavy into Python, and I absolutely love Python too. At the end of the day, PowerShell and Python do kind of the exact same thing. In fact, I have a skill in the DevNet course called Automate Cisco Platforms with PowerShell because I'm sitting here going through all of these skills over and over and over again. I'm doing the same stuff in Python and I'm like, PowerShell can do this too. It's just interacting with a REST API at the end of the day. But where PowerShell sets itself apart is it borrowed one of the most powerful things from Bash and that's the pipeline. Let's explore it. So I want to demonstrate to you the power of PowerShell and the pipeline, but I'm going to do it by showing you the Meraki SDK in Python first. You see, this is really where I got kind of the idea of doing this other project that I'm working on where I'm building PowerShell commands for Meraki. You see, right here, this little SDK in Python, you can just call git organizations and it returns to a list of the organizations. It's that simple. Then git organization networks and then it returns to a list of organization networks. That's simple. This really greatly condensed the amount of code we had to do when we were manually interacting with the Meraki API. I mean, it looked more like something like this, where we had to build one body that performed that one command. Now that's been simplified down into one little method call right here. I wanted to do this same similar kind of thing with PowerShell, but the reason why I chose PowerShell is because of that PowerShell pipeline that I keep bringing up. So I am writing it in C Sharp. It looks something like this. You don't have to bore yourself with the details because uh, I'm going to jump right into the PowerShell demo now and show you the PowerShell pipeline in action. So here I've got a little PowerShell file fired up here and I've got the Meraki DevNet Sandbox auth token stored in a variable already. So that way we can use that token to get connected and make all these method calls. So to get started, let's talk about just a basic structure of how Meraki works. You have your organization, then you have networks. Maybe I'll draw a couple of them here. And then within each of those networks, you have clients. So typically this would be something like return to me the organization so I can get the ID, then get the list of networks from that organization ID, then get the list of clients from that network ID and so on. The idea though, if I'm trying to get from point A to point Z down here where clients are, if I'm just trying to get a list of clients, I would have to make this call, then this call, and then this call and storing it all in variables. Whereas the PowerShell pipeline kind of just strings the whole thing together. Watch it in action here. We'll start by doing git Meraki orgs. I'll specify my token as the parameter and that's all I need to do to get this started. We'll debug it and there it is. There's the list of the orgs that are brought back to me. Now here's the thing. Each one of these organizations existed in the pipeline at the time that this command was run. So I could have moved it to the very next command and made decisions based on the output. Let's say I want to pipe the output of all of these orgs into a filter. I want to narrow it down to just one specific organization, for instance. I'll pipe the output into the where object commandlet and I'll say where the name equals devnet sandbox. If I debug this, I should only get one item returned to me. There it is. Now that I have that one item, I can move this down the chain to get the list of networks. So we'll say git Meraki nets 
and I'll specify the token one more time, but this is where it gets nuts. See, another required parameter for this command, like get Meraki networks, is we have to specify an organization ID. That way it knows which networks it's getting from which organization. But I'm not going to type anything there. Why? Because when this item was actually retrieved, right here, you can kind of see what I'm circling, it automatically already had a property called organization ID. The data that was returned came back to me called organization ID. PowerShell is smart enough to match the property name to the parameter in the next command when you pass it through the pipeline. So I don't actually have to type org ID because it'll automatically say like, oh, org ID is a required parameter. Am I receiving anything that has an org ID? Oh, I am. I'll use that org ID just like that. So if I actually save and debug this script right now, there's a list of the networks for that organization, just like that. We can continue down the chain. We'll filter out to just one specific network here. We'll take this DNS MB4 that's got someone's email address tacked onto it for some reason. Paste that in here. So if I debug the script one more time, it should just return to me the one network. There it is. And then lastly, I can take that network ID that's been returned to me. You see it's called net ID and we'll say get Meraki clients. We'll specify my token one more time. But again, I don't have to specify the net ID because this object already has a net ID. So debugging it one more time, let's see if this just goes straight down the chain and returns me a list of clients. Boom, it ran, it returned me the list of clients. It's so stinking fast because it's compiled thanks to the fact that it's written in C sharp. And now I've chained all of these commands together on effectively one line of code and got exactly the data that I needed. More importantly, this works really efficiently because notice nowhere, with the exception of the token, did I have to store anything in variables. As the objects got moved through the pipeline, if they weren't needed anymore, they were automatically disposed of. So it makes for very efficient processing too. So while Python and PowerShell are very similar in a lot of ways, maybe Python is a lot easier to read and it's a lot richer of a library set because, well, more people are using Python. It's, it's become a very universal language, it's the most used programming language that there is. I still think PowerShell is a very competitive language and one that's worthy of learning, especially if you work in a Windows Server administration environment because there's a PowerShell command line for everything. But people like me are out there contributing to PowerShell by trying to build commandlets for other platforms, in this case like Cisco Meraki. I really think PowerShell gets its power in the fact that it intelligently moves objects through the pipeline and makes decisions as it goes along without wasting any RAM space or lines of code or anything. We can just chain our commands one into the other and let them just flow all the way through the workflow that we want until it gets to the specific item that we're really looking for. So that's why I think PowerShell is really powerful. You can learn more about PowerShell on CBT Nuggets. Both Jacob Moran and Garth Schulte have courses on CBT Nuggets. So get in there and check it out. In the meantime, thanks for stopping by y'all. I'll see y'all in the next one.